Welcome back. It's episode 19. Damn. 19 weeks. 18 19. weeks, but 19 episodes. 19 episodes. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm Colton Robertson. I'm joined by uh, my boy, Tavares Pennington. We've got a we got a guest with us today. Hello. What's your name? Uh, Kenton. Hi, Kenton. This is, uh, we're at William Jewell. We're actually in a recording studio for the first time ever. And, uh, oh, shit. In our, Upgrading on y'all bitches. Yeah, for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll be back in here. Of course. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, what you been up to? You know, school. A lot school? of school. I got fucking sick the other day. Like, I don't know. I've been easing into a sickness, and mm-hmm. it's like, it was, it was fucking me up. Yeah. I got these super strong pain pills, though, from a uh, slady at my job. Oh. Did the trick. Talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> 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 the, uh, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been working, too. Been working. What about you, Kenton? What you been up to? Yeah, school. School. Yeah. A lot of school. I'm I'm not going to school at the moment, so yeah. I don't I don't yeah. relate. I don't relate here. Yeah, but uh, gap semester guy. Yeah, year year gap year gap year gap year. But uh, I've been uh working on some television, mm-hmm. working on work, working on work. Uh, Stack up. I've been watching the league. Pretty classic. Yeah, I, I remember. Show. It's yeah. a, it's a cult classic. That was a huge thing in high school. I oh yeah, I l- love that show. And it's one that's just easy to have on in the background. Yeah. You know? Funniest shit. One of the funnier shows I've ever watched. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Still working my way through Mr. Robot. Yep. It, it's getting deal. crazy. It's getting it is. Crazy. It's getting it's getting crazy. And we'll have a we'll have some more to talk about. We will. That's what we're gonna do again. Because last week's conversation was so fucking good that we decided let's fucking do it again. Yeah, we, and and this time, you know, we got we got a real consultant. We got Mr. Philosophy Major over here. Oh yes, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Oxbridge Philosophy Major. <laughs> That's the honors <laughs> program here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you guys want to roll the tape? Ah, uh-huh. ah, uh-huh. no. Yo, yo, hold on. Listen to this shit first. Uh, all right, roll the tape. You have now entered the Penny Bloom Podcast. Hosted by none other than Colton Robinson and Tavares Pennington. I hope you are prepared for a show unlike any that you've ever seen before. What you heard before that uh, little nice intro that I did, sick as fuck. Sick as fuck. Sick as fuck. Super sick. <laughs> Fucking sick. <laughs> uh, was Ghostface Killer on his new album, Ghostface Killers. Ghostface <laughs> Killers. That was a very inventive name, by the way. Oh, I mean, genius. Yeah. How did he come up with it? I don't know. It's like you just added an S. I can't. What? <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> How does Who? he do it? <laughs> <laughs> Who would do such a thing? You know? But uh, it's uh, it's fucking good. Am I right? No, I think I'm fucking right. That shit's some boom bap from heaven, like. Oh my gosh, he uh, he re- he released this album a few months after an album he released with a group called Zarface. Have you listened mm. to that? I Zarface meets Ghostface. That shit's hard too. It's more oh, uh, shit. it it is boom bap, but it's very reminiscent of like a. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say reminiscent. It's, it's like almost video gamey. It's weird. I don't who's, know how to explain it. Who's Zarface? It. Like Zarface is uh, Inspector Deck and uh, a couple of other dudes. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a, it's another member of the Wu Tang Clan, okay. and then just other guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that album is really fucking good, and I've wanted to talk about it for a while, but I've just kept forgetting to. Uh-huh. Okay. But uh, yeah, Ghostface Killer has been on a roll lately. And yeah, yeah. Really, no better time to release this. Honestly, he kind of came back. I, I I had totally forgot about him until that um, neighborhood mixtape oh, came out. So good. They had the Ghostface verse on it. Beat take one. Yes. Oh my god. So I, beautiful. that whole hip hop EP like was oh that was a bonkers. Stout. Even the one like just straight like neighborhood alt song that they had on their mm-hmm. uh, Paradise. That shit slaps that too. That shit was good. Like that was just a through and through EP. Like. Yeah, he's got a on this new one. He's got a couple of features from Sun God. Which is his his son? His it's son? his actual son, which mm. I thought was pretty cool. How did he come up with that name? I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's it's spelled like the star in the sky, sun, S U N 
God. Yeah. I wonder if there's something between son and son. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe uh maybe that's his birth name. That would be And Ghostface was just like, key. you know what? God. Like <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're gonna be a god. Like yeah. He was just like, fuck it. I'll be on my cocky shit for low, this one. Low key, though, like, son would, like kill his son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's got to have a badass name. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, son would be a dope ass name. I don't know, though. Ghostface Killer's real name is Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I, it's a good name. By the way, if you haven't been watching the um, Wu Tang Clan American special, I have to think that's why he chose to release this album when he did. Yeah. No, for a sure. few weeks into the it uh, makes sense. Like people, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. and I love that Wu Tang. Like, they have been consistently releasing music. Like, oh yeah, like their, their solo careers are every bit. Their solo I mean, they're not as notorious, huge, but, but they're they just big. put out like a Wu Tang Clan album not mm-hmm. too long ago. No, yeah, like, just a few the last years, two ago. years ago. Yeah, and the, uh, I mean, they're all doing pretty good. Yeah. Method Man is obviously. Yeah, I think no. he's probably the most oh, yeah. successful. Like. Solo. Which is weird to me because I feel like Method I never Man, thought he was the best. I never thought he was the best. Not I didn't either. But I, I feel like the other ones didn't really want that sort of like Ghostface oh, Killer especially is very like he seems really like I I don't know I just yeah. like rapping. Yeah, exactly. So. I remember I, I I saw him on Couples Therapy, <laughs> this reality TV show oh, that shit. my mom was watching. <laughs> yeah, that shit was crazy. And it was like he would just wear like a hat around everywhere. Like he just like didn't talk to many people. Like, yeah, he's real. Yeah, Method Man's like a whole ass movie star. Like he, he, yo, uh, he gets a bunch of roles in movies. That fucking, uh, he put out a classic with, um, shit. What is it? Red Man? No, 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 no. Method Man, and, Method Man, and uh, Red Man. Yeah. What what movie was that? I can't remember the name of it right now. But they made a sequel to it, that wasn't even really a sequel, and it was really fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I can't. I didn't, why can't? How high? Yeah, how high? That's what. Yeah, it was, okay. How high? That shit. That, classic the, stoner the first, comedy. The first movie is a classic. Yeah, that's a classic, classic stoner, stoner comedy. comedy. Definitely, a, that's a segment we'll have to do. That is, yeah. I the remember. The best stoner comedies. I, you can't find it anywhere, though. Uh, you cannot. I know. Uh, I've tried. Yeah. I've tried, too. I, I think I watched it once, like, not, like, with, like maybe a year ago or so. I had to, like, illegally stream it. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Legally. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Fuck the law. We should probably censor that. <laughs> 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 uh... But yeah, this Ghostface album was really fucking good, and I strongly recommend you listen to it. What other uh, new music do we have this week? Or not just this week, but recently, within the last uh, well, three Well, there's the weeks. Hobo Johnson and JPEG Mafia albums. Ooh. Yeah. I listened to Hobo Johnson yesterday. Mm. Was that? that shit, I mean, if you're into Hobo Johnson, you'll yeah. like it. Yeah. But if that's not for you, then definitely don't listen. I, I'm real, <laughs> like... I can't really decide where I'm at with Hobo Johnson. And I get that. There are certain songs where I'm like, uh, this just isn't it. Yeah. Like, this, this isn't good. It's just super... Have you have you listened to Hobo Johnson? I just want to die. He, he, I, he does like this I talk like, and then I word. talk and then I cry and then I die. I mean, I don't know <laughs> yeah. why. I'm like... <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like, it's like this real like offbeat spoken word shit that's just like... You really and have some to. songs. It's really it's interesting and good. In yeah, some songs, exactly. Other places, it it's just sounds not like good. It just sounds like he's crying on the microphone. Like I'm just like, oh my god. But almost top to bottom, I really appreciated this album. Okay. There were only a few songs where I was kind of like, okay, like this can just go yeah. ahead and end. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, there's JPEG Mafia. I haven't gotten a chance to listen. I, I've to that. listened to I Am a Thought. Uh, what was it? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That shit was good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you, I need you to check it out for album, sure. Can, yeah. How was it? Uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's it, uh, JPEG Mafia, I think, further developing the sound that... He's uh, established? Yeah, that he established in his last album. But mm-hmm. he definitely takes it new directions, too. Um, I mean, there's more experimental sounds within the instrumentals. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, if, if, if you like that weird shit, then I think you'll like it. But uh, Yeah, and I mean... That's that's what you gotta like about that's what JPEG. Like about that's it. the point of he's JPEG Mafia. About yeah, like, and really he's really like, big. he's like, you can fuck with my music or you cannot. I'm gonna keep making it anyway. I think the only problem that I could ever have with this music is how he screams. Like, yeah, I, I have a tough time with anybody yeah. screaming, and those yeah. are the songs on the Hobo Johnson album that I don't yeah, like. Yeah, he, he like yells, and yeah. I'm like, oh, this is yeah. a little bit too much. Yeah, yeah, the. Uh, I definitely feel that. But yeah, ultimately, that's the point of music in my opinion mm-hmm. if you're an artist is trying to progress and further the sound that you've established and if jpeg mafia did that with his 
mm-hmm. most recent album then yeah you got to think it's pretty fucking good and, mm-hmm. and also to i, th- I think uh yeah, establish a sound for yourself too. Oh and yeah, for sure. Explore sonically mm-hmm. what relates to you. Yeah, and exactly. Like you, you got to find it. what you like. Yeah. Because if you're just making music to appeal to the masses and you don't fucking like it, what's the point of doing it? Exactly. You know. Yeah. So yeah. if he's fucking with the shit he's doing, he's gonna keep doing the shit he's, he's doing. Keep doing the shit he's doing. That's fucking. That's that's the best. That's, that's the that best is, shit about it. That is the best, isn't it? We um, also. Oh, what's up? What's up? Keep going. Well, and uh, I, I think that. Uh, Another example of somebody possibly doing that is uh, Lana Del Rey. I was going to say the yeah. exact same thing. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, Norman fucking Rockwell. I lo- like, as soon as I oh saw the God. title on the cover art, I was like, yes. Like, I was like, Lana Del Rey's a goddess. She, she, she fucking knows how to nail an aesthetic. Like, oh. I don't know what it is. I've never seen anyone do it so well. Did you know she invented sex? This is true. Are you for real? I, this, that is a fact. Damn. She I invented sex. I believe it. I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's Lana Del fucking Ray. Lana Del fucking Ray. It's the Catalina fucking wine mixer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was a good album. No, I... So like, great when album. When it first Not came good. out, I, as soon as I... Like, Lana Del Rey is one of those people who, like, I love to listen to when I'm studying mm-hmm. type shit. Yeah. But it's like, I can't really... Like, I have, like, a playlist of music that I listen to when I study. But it's like, none of that shit's really like Lana Del Rey. It's just Lana Del Rey. Yeah. It's like, I just fuck with that sound. God. And so I listened to this, like, as, like, the day it came out, and I was just like, yeah, she's got another one. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't add Lana Del Rey to playlists. Because if mm-hmm. I'm listening to Lana Del Rey, you just listen I want to wanna listen to Lana Del Rey. Yo. Nothing else. <laughs> when I first discovered her, I was I just like was on Lana Del Rey for two race two days straight. Like, oh my god, two rays straight. Two rays straight. Yeah, dude, that's so many rays. That's hella rays. Yeah, I mean, there's just people like that too. That I think you just gotta listen to them as an album or as an artist. Yeah, really. absolutely. Exactly. There are some. Uh, a certain example of that, obviously not at all the same kind of music, but like you have to really focus on their music if you're going to listen to it for me is Eminem oh yeah if I'm listening to Eminem I love Kamikaze really yeah you love Kamikaze yeah you know what I loved Kamikaze (laughs) when it came out (laughs) when it came out I listened to that shit bumped it in my room and I was like holy shit this is hard he came back and then then it was just like a few weeks later I was like okay yeah (laughs) (laughs) I don't really listen to it much anymore I don't either but like I remember when that shit dropped I was like yo this is good but honestly I feel like it was just because it was juxtaposed with uh, what was that album that shit that he put out oh uh, the the, uh, re- Re, re uh, rebirth or uh, I don't know I one so, yeah. reborn or some shit. That it was really holy bad. Fuck that with was... uh, with Ed Sheeran on a feature. <laughs> They're a more hateable song than Eminem featuring Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. Like you don't even have to listen. They you can just that. go no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they did that. That's that's what they did. I don't I don't know why they did it, but they did that. And honestly, when I listen to it, it's not that bad of a song. I just like hating on I, I, <laughs> But there are songs that are just so bad on that album that you have to hate the other songs. Oh, yeah. Like, that album, I, I can't Like, I've it. never felt like, Eminem, like I, Eminem was more of a trailer park dude than I did listening to that. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> and like, when I... I tried to defend it at first. I'm the same way with every, like, every album yeah. by a big artist. I'm like, it's like, you know, they're expressing their artistic <laughs> ability. Like, that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. If they accomplished what they wanted, it's okay. Yeah. It's just I don't want to listen to it. <laughs> that's that's fair. That's usually how I. That's the conclusion I usually come to. Like mm. with Chance the Rapper's "The Big Day." <laughs> yeah. 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 Can we can we agree I that like he did what he wanted so and I respect that. I, I walk into not good though. I walk into one of my fraternity brothers' room the other day and he's like playing it on his Do TV. Do you remember? And. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just go. Oh shit! You listen to Chance? And he's like, Yeah. And I was like, God, this album's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, I know. I, I was trying to listen again to be sure, but That's like, what I, I tried four <laughs> times. I listened to it through like four times, and by the end of the fourth one, I was like, Yeah, I probably won't do this again. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a good two, and I was like, <sighs> I actually didn't think Hot Shower was terrible the first time I heard it. Like. I was just like, oh, you know, Chance is Dean yeah. Chance. And then I, yeah. I listened to it again. I was just like, you know, Chance and is It's not actually been kind chance. of the opposite for me. <laughs> I've It's actually grown on me a little bit. And I actually haven't listened to it since, like, the last time I listened to the album all the way through, which was, like, a week after it released. Yeah. Uh, 
But, like, every once in a while, I'll just fucking, like, yell, hot damn hot water hot shower <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Getting lean, it's, smoking green cauliflower. See, but that's the thing about Chins. Like, he's so catchy, but, see, he, he was still catchy on this album. But oh, he yeah. didn't realize that while being catchy, he was also being extremely corny. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that's the thing. I was like, I tried, like, I always try to defend my favorite artists in my mind because uh-huh. I was like, oh, you know, he's always been kind of corny. And then, like, I look back and I'm like, he's never been this corny. <laughs> yeah, no. And like, I don't, ha- okay, so did the coloring book thing happen with you two? How, that yeah, album, we've, we've discussed Yeah, this. we have. We've, we've discussed have. That album just isn't as good as when it came out. No, I mean, and... There are certain songs, obviously, that are still great. Yeah. But I go back and listen to other songs, and exactly. I'm like, wow. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, I really loved this. Yeah, time. me too. I loved All Night when I first heard it. All night, I've been drinking all night, I've been drinking all night, I've been drinking it. Hey. I was <laughs> like, you know, this has got a nice bouncy beat. And then, like, yeah. Not going to lie, that song no. went up in concert. It did. I liked yeah, that in concert. I, I imagine it would. Yeah, but uh, let's get back to Lana Del Rey <laughs> as this uh, this little tangent began. <laughs> Uh, uh, what were some of your of us, What were huh? some of your favorite songs? No, uh, you know what? That's the beauty. I was looking Sorry. at it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 no, I have a feeling you're about to say what I was going to say. So go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to get back to what we were talking about. <laughs> I was going to oh, say, shit. you know, that's the beauty of our podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. the rabbit holes you know, is what it's about. It is what it's about. That's like last week here. was just supposed to be the, an episode breakdown of Mr. Robot, mm-hmm. and it turned into this long beautiful discussion about life in general yeah you know <laughs> it's crazy how it happens yeah but all right you can go ahead and say what you're gonna say now nah, but you can like, unshut the fuck up okay thank you <laughs> um i don't even like i was looking at the song titles and i just remember like every time a song would come on looking at my phone and be like oh yeah i need to remember oh yeah this you're one. like oh yeah and i'm just looking at every them time again, you and I'm never like, remember yeah these are basically all of them like th- this shit was fire like oh, and when, so when i listen to lana del rey it's like it's like ken said like it's an album artist like I don't even like so for example um who's an artist that i'm like that with frank ocean frank ocean Ooh. exactly i don't like, listen to frank i don't listen to chanel orange if i'm not gonna listen to every single song oh, yeah. yeah like i'm th- same with blonde like uh-huh. there are there's one song off blonde that i will listen to just as an aside but if i'm listening to any other song I'm listening to it all with her. Yeah. Pretty much any of his songs besides Chanel. If I'm listening to one of his songs, oh, yeah. like I'm probably just listening to his artist page. Also. Oh, yeah. for sure. Like yeah. I, uh, I mean, I listened to Blonde like two times through in a row the other yeah. night, just cause. Yeah, just cause. I was like, I it, it ended, and I was like, you know, I'll run that back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, I'll start the shit over. <laughs> but uh, Lana Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, How to Disappear, I remember, was Venice Bitch. That shit was oh, fire. Fuck it, I love you. I don't know it, what it I was. Love you. Bro, man, I moved to California, but Dude. it's just a state of mind. Oh, <laughs> my God. Like, I fucking yo, loved like, it. Like, what the fuck? That's, uh, that's my and favorite then, part of the at, entire At first, album. I was like, I don't know how I feel about her being like, fuck it, I love you. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, I love this is fire. <laughs> God, it was so good. I mean, uh, the one that I can't remember... Like the most is uh, mm-hmm. Cinnamon Girl. I don't I don't know why, but Yo, I can't I can't like, think of how that goes. What kind of title is this? Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have. But Dash, I have it. But I have it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just like you know this is gonna be fire. If that's a title. Oh, so good. And I like, liked a uh, love song. She did the uh, remix or like a remake and cover of Doing Time. Mm. She's like like yeah. That got some hate. Wait. Did you see that on Twitter? No. There were some there were some pretty outraged hip hop heads that did not like that she covered that song. Why? Because that's a pretty classic hip hop song. Oh, I mean, it's a pretty classic R and B song. But I feel I like I don't give a shit. I don't. I, don't, I thought it was really. Cool. I don't care if people do covers if it's in a different genre completely. Me too. Like, like if you if you're doing I just feel like that's if you're doing an R and B cover of an R and B song. Yeah. That's like okay. Like yeah. why? Exactly. But. When you switch it up completely and make it an alternative so- song and it doesn't sound anything like the original, yeah, it's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be. It's good. gonna be interesting at least. At the yeah. very least. And uh, she did a really good job with this entire album. I love California, the oh, next yeah. best American record. I love that song. I'm yeah. trying to think of some of the other ones. Hope, happiness is a butterfly. It's a good I love one. that she put fucking in her title. I did too. This also the important point also of analysis. Also an exclamation point. Important point of analysis. In you want you want to think back to Scumfuck Flower Boy? I, I do think back to Scumfuck. Do you remember Flower. what happened with that? People were outraged by the fact that the fuck was in the title. Exactly. 
and sexist. so this is and, 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 and it's Tyler. Like, uh, what you do know, you expect? Like, it's like th- they'll let they'll let white girl Lana Del Rey put fucking in her title, but they won't let Tyler name his album Scumfuck Flower Boy. Who do you think is listening to Norman fucking Rockwell? Little white girls. Little white girls and us. <laughs> and they already know it's Tyler. Like, we know what yeah, Tyler Yeah, the people Vanilla. listening to and Tyler are like, okay, the craziest thing Flower about Boy. it was like, Flower Boy was the album where he was actually matured. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, he, he had changed his Twitter handle away from fuck Tyler. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, going into the album, I did not expect what was to come because it was originally Holy called shit. Scum Fuck Honestly, Flower Boy. I, Maybe that's why he changed it. What, no, he didn't change it. Apple Music didn't let him post it as that. He he still pushed the album Scumfuck Flower Boy. That's true. Yeah. But it was listed that nowhere because nobody would allow it. That's annoying. And I remember reading a story about it. Like, he was pretty upset about that. That's really annoying. But then they go and, like, fucking... I remember at the Apple event that year, that was, like, the the headlining album or whatever for mm-hmm. Apple Music. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. Like, let this man release the the the, the art how it was intended to. Like, that's the that's the bare minimum for art. Yeah, the title. <laughs> like, let me name it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But Norman fucking Rockwell was a great album. Yeah, it was. Even if it has fucking in the title. There's something about having fucking the title. That made it all the more appealing. Yeah. I mean, if it was just named Nathan or Norman Rockwell, yeah. I almost said Nathan Rockwell. We went to high school with him. <laughs> Norman Rockwell, I, I would have been a little less intrigued. Yeah. I would have listened. It's Lana Del Rey, but <laughs> I would have been like, "Ugh, like really?" Yeah, yeah. I think I think me too. Yeah, but Norman fucking Rockwell. Honestly, I didn't. I'm in. I didn't think I'd like Lust for Life when I first saw that title, but that shit. That song. That shit's a damn. That classic. song with the weekend, Lust for Life. <sighs> oh, buddy. Yeah. I love that song. The ASAP Rocky song and the Playboy Cardi song mm-hmm. in that album. Pretty much that whole album too. Lana Del Rey hasn't missed really. I remember White Must or Red Mustang or White Mustang, uh, Cherry. Oh, all mm. that shit. Mm. Remember uh, Summertime Sadness? That's a throwback. That's a way throwback. Uh, the first song, the first Lana Del Rey. Summertime. <laughs> the first Lana Del Rey song that I heard, I think, was um, Video Games. That was the first song I heard, too. I heard it on The Great Gatsby. And as soon as I movie. heard it, I just went and listened to her whole discog. Like, I was just like, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to talk about the uh, Great Gatsby soundtrack at some point. Oh, oh that's shit. a segment we should do. Best movie soundtracks of all time. Damn. Oh, shit. I feel like we've ta- we've said this before. That's I'm sure we have. We listen we, to we, too many we, movie soundtracks. Oh God, there's so many that are so brilliant. I we'll talk about it when that when that yeah, comes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but I look forward to Blink One Eighty Two. Blink One Eighty Two. Blink One Eighty Two. Blink One Eighty Two. They're they still out here, an, folks. They did. They they released an album. I can't remember what it's called at the moment, <laughs> but it's a very colorful title. I mean, it's a very colorful album art. With the name Blink One Eighty Two on it. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I listened to it all the way through today. Okay. How was it? Ooh. I was surprised. Very psychedelic. Nine. Maybe it's their ninth album. That makes sense. Hmm. I like that top, uh, the cover. Yeah. Dude, the cover art's really good. That's really what made me go, okay, I'll listen to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, and pretty much through and through, I really liked it. Okay. It's uh, it's rock. It's yeah. I mean, you got to appreciate rock in order to enjoy the album. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's certain songs where they kind of slow it down and don't go so headbanging hard. Okay. And on those, I really, really enjoy their sound because they, objectively, they're a g- good band. Like, yeah. they're a, a classic band, yeah. really. But I, I've just never been into the hard, like, mm-hmm. fuck yeah! Yeah, no. Like, it's not, not, it's not for my me. favorite. It's just... not for me. But, uh, there's a, a few songs on here that I really liked. I liked uh, Pin the Grenade. That was a really good song. Really like the last portion of the album, like the last five songs, mm-hmm. 10 through 15. Really, really good. And they also are like a change of pace from the rest of mm-hmm. it. So uh, uh, on some emo shit, mm-hmm. that's surprisingly... There's only one explicit song? Yep. I, they're the, I didn't realize Blink-182 was clean like that. I, I didn't realize that earlier when I was listening to it, but that's weird. On some emo shit, surprisingly good. Uh, Hung over you, wh- like that's a really good song. Really. Uh, Heaven, okay. also very good, and Blame It on My Youth. I think those are probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. But there are other ones that, like at the beginning, I was like, oh yeah, okay, <laughs> ooh, and then it was like, <laughs> 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 I 
wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh man. It's like, oh yeah. man. That's basically how every X album goes. Yeah, I was, I was like, it is. I was getting really into it too. I was oh, like, I remember, fl- like, no, what was it? It was a uh, Skins. You remember when Skins dropped oh. his posthumous album? Yeah. Haven't they? Didn't they do posthumous an- albums? Yeah, I yeah. thought they did another one too. <laughs> I think they've done. Oh, they, no, they just put out a uh, question mark deluxe. Yeah. yeah There's actually that. some interesting songs. So they, they didn't remake music mostly. They just put out shit that X hadn't released that he oh. had recorded. Like yeah. it was like it was like covers of his own songs and shit, like acoustic versions and things like that. Yeah. So it was actually kinda neat to listen there was, to. Yeah, there was actually a couple of songs on there. I, I haven't mm-hmm. listened to everything on it, but yeah. there was a couple that I, I And he had cool. some instrumentals on there that were fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember the first time I listened to Question Mark. Mm-hmm. I fucking loved that. Yo, album. that album is. No good. matter how you feel about XXX, yeah, that's what just amazing. The that's music's what made good. Me sure. He is a good artist. Yeah, that's what made me sure. Like, Especially that album. Oh, dude, changes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I fucking love that song. Right, Infinity. Uh, Remedy for a broken heart. Yo, mm-hmm. the first time with I heard little, that, I was like, yeah. With a little bit of weed and a little bit of cash, with a little bit of this, with a little bit of that, we gonna be, uh, we gonna be all uh, right, we gonna be. Uh, I was just like, it's so simple, like the, the entire and, yeah, song. Yeah, because like he only does like one verse, and then mm-hmm. it's this. He just repeats it for the rest yeah. of the song, mm-hmm. and I normally don't like that, Me but either. like that's what I expected of X, and because that, that's, that's what, what X did. does. Yeah. yeah, but he was fucking good at it like he somehow. was good at it like changes even was Inf- just the same chorus being sung um, over and over and it was beautiful infinity 888 with joey <sighs> Yo, murder these as flows as like a murder these whole ass people where the fuck is your energy bro <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so i remember uh make a jo- person deep throat a desert J- eagle J- oh god <laughs> joey badass had a line that just blew my mind and he, he was like uh gonna read the whole shit he was like uh my nigga's trapped behind like or my, my nigga's trapped in cells like salmonella or something oh, like that yeah, <laughs> and i was like <laughs> trapped in was cells like that, salmonella yeah. i was like like salmonella <laughs> you're, you're like, like i don't know how deep that, you gotta dude. think about that metaphor dude what i love is that like I love when lines stand out like that when yeah. you're like, yo, how the fuck did yeah, you come and, up and with And it's that? not like a spectacular line no, in and of itself. No, it's, it's just so just, fucking it's random. It's just another rhyme, but like, fuck. Like, <laughs> you put some thought into that shit. Yeah, because he had to come up with the rhyme. That's that's one of those ones that he came up with the rhyme before he came up with the uh, actual bar that was going to go there. And it's just like, how the fuck did you come up with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> crazy I yeah i mean it's genius <laughs> so you know that's the music you know we had a we had ghostface we had hobo johnson jpeg mafia lana del rey blink 182 and a lot of other stuff in there and that a lot didn't of matter stuff at all because this is the penny balloon podcast yeah because you know we fuck around you know we, we do what we want you know and that's just what we do you know what we want you know let's move on to the next segment all right we're gonna continue our conversation from last week because that conversation was good objectively objectively if you've listened to it you appreciated it (laughs) i know this go ahead and and state that (laughs) on my cocky shit like i know that that was a good conversation on that cocky shit yeah um uh so mr robot it poses a lot of really good philosophical material oh yeah would you like to uh, speak to any of those in particular? Anything? That yeah, you- I mean, honestly, the first one is just like taking control of your reality. Like, it, it, that's that's really what it is, and that show plays a lot. Not only with the reality in the show, but just with the way you y- perceive your reality. reality as a viewer. Like, yeah. it 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 is incredible how it um, kind of transforms the entire meaning mm-hmm. of these like simple social ideas, like the idea that you uh you have to work within a corporation to like work so you have to like work your way up things like that like i think that um shit i'm blanking on his name you know who i'm talking wellick yeah. uh tyrell like i think his his storyline is really interesting because it's like it's this this arc that's that's very like he's shooting like upwards right Yo, like yeah. he's, he's, he's gonna path. do anything that it takes to fucking be the man yeah but like what is that? That shit does crazy. Like, what, like yeah, like what's it doing for you? Yeah, what, like are you a happy individual? And if you, you watch that, if you watch that show, Tyrell <laughs> Wellick is not happy. Yeah, dude's fucking batshit. But so. what's interesting about that too is that he probably doesn't realize that he's not happy. That's mm-hmm. true. That's that's another way you can look and, at it. And it's like the uh, what that reveals too, and what 
like I feel like the show is probably revealing there is these psychological mechanisms we have and he's probably uh, because he hasn't had certain ideas put into his head yeah. uh, like he just can't recognize that he's not happy he thinks he's he's not happy exactly. because he hasn't reached the top yeah yet. so hasn't. like he when he gets there he's like that's it mm-hmm. but that's, that's never gonna actually come mm-hmm. yeah exactly and uh, that's playing into that it's like everybody's reality is different because they perceive everything different than everybody else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, what I think is a great example of that is the um, the the first in the first few. I think the first episode when he's with uh, Shayla, and she comes over, gives him drugs, and she's like, "Hey, like you want to get high together and shit." Mm-hmm. And like Elliot's just like, "I need my fucking morphine." I ran <laughs> out. I'm a fucking loner and I'm sad as fuck. Give me my morphine. Like, and she's like, "Ah, hey, you want to do drugs <laughs> together and then probably have sex after?" Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like once they do that, Elliot's just like, "All right." <laughs> yeah, like he just looks so un- like yeah. He was just laying there. He was like, yeah. She's just he's like, like that happened. Knocked the fuck out. And, like she's still there when he gets back from work, and, and he's, he's just like, like yo, get, get the, the fuck, fuck out. out. <laughs> like, like that that right he there. He said, Shayla, get the fuck out <laughs> of my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of naked bitch in his bed. Who's actually bad as fuck. And he's just yo, like, get and the like fuck out the pa- the power move there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would never do it. Ah, <laughs> but like, yeah. but like he walked in. Didn't even say a word to her besides, Shayla, get the fuck, fuck out. out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's just, that is exactly like the difference in how from character to character, the reality is just so fucking different. And what that's revealing too is precisely what you were talking about just before is like, we, like all, every individual perceives reality differently. Mm-hmm. Like we want to talk about theories of alternate realities. They already exist. <laughs> Oh, literally Honestly, every person. Do. Every person has a different reality, uh-huh. and even on a, it, we we can look at it on an individual level too, because it's like you think about it, and from one moment to the next, like you're a different individual yeah. in yeah. a certain sense because no. you're on a different train and of thought. That that's what consciousness is, right? Like that's how it exerts itself. Like it's it's something that's that's ever present and it's going in every which way at all times. That's how you perceive of the world hopefully right? ever expanding as hopefully well. ever expanding um oh, yeah. theoretically until you get about 25 i think right yeah yeah um <laughs> then your brain's fully developed well is your brain your conscious that's another question um <laughs> um but getting down to it the anatomy <laughs> of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> chemicals and shit yeah in the, your the, brain <laughs> There's, there's a lot of theories about it. There's also theories that your consciousness isn't even in your body. Yeah. It's instead mm. something that is, occupies the world around you. Yeah. And then, like, somehow gets projected into you. I don't know how any of those make sense. But, but they, they, well, they, well, that's the thing. You don't know how that makes sense, but why do the chemicals make sense? Exactly. exactly. Like, it's just kind of like, like, we just accept these things as being an explanation. Yeah. And, like... Sure, there is definitely science to back these things up, uh-huh. but there's probably science to back other things up exactly. too that we just haven't explored. And it's yeah. really just what makes sense to you and like exactly. what ideas become. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, that's exactly. So I want to like th- 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 here's an example. This morning, I, I feel like I okay. So I woke up right, of course, like feeling like shit. That is what you do in the morning. Yeah. Hopefully, exactly. Yeah, really. yeah. I didn't have class until twelve thirty, so I was like, I really want to sleep in, but yeah. fuck, I didn't do my philosophy or race essay or reading. Uh, so <laughs> I had to do that. So when I woke up, I'm like, yeah, there's no way I want to get out of bed. So I just grabbed my computer and I laid in bed with my computer tilted to the side, just <laughs> reading and shit. And then um, I, I I was so like in this mid state of consciousness yeah. that there were times where like I would kind of be like thinking I'm reading, but really be asleep. Right. Yeah. Like my eyes are closed and I'd wake up and be like, oh, shit, I You're totally like, thought I was still fuck, reading. I thought I was reading. But the craziest thing was. I would so I have to click on my mouse pad to flip the page. You'd been clicking. I thought I was clicking, and so like I'm imagining I'm still reading, and then I just like am brought back to reality when I open my eyes. I'm like, what? How, like, how did I convince myself that I was actually reading and had clicked this button? And like I'm like, oh shit! I never even went to the next page. Like, what am I doing? You know, I have a weird like scenario that's similar to that. Okay. There was one time I was uh, I. I, it was towards the end of the night and I was dreaming and I dreamed that my dad came into my room to tell me good night and uh, immediately like without even realizing that I'd woken up my dad actually came into my room and woke me up for the day and was like get your ass up and go to school <laughs> so he was like good night you woke up he said good morning <laughs> <laughs> you were like no oh, what It'd the be like, fuck no but that just shows you like I, I had one of those exactly like, yeah. like several years ago but it stuck with me because it was uh-huh. so fucking it weird because so like I felt like I fell asleep 
and then I just fucking woke up. I was yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, I had to have been asleep like 10 minutes. Yeah. So I feel like we can extrapolate some basic some basic forms of, of, of consciousness, right? Like we have, we have, when you're asleep, your consciousness is in a different state than when it's awake. Um, what other ways can you alter consciousness? Drugs? Well, yeah, I mean, drugs will do it. But I think uh, they, so they measure different in Drugs psychology. alter more than us, consciousness. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But they, they measure different, uh, uh, different wavelengths that you're, because your brain is like constantly emitting brain waves, yeah. like electric waves. Um, and so they have, it, it just depends on the frequency of the wave. Like if you're thinking really hectically and like trying to focus on something, yeah, really high yeah. frequency. But if you're like in a really relaxed state, like hypnosis, for mm-hmm. example, or like you're gonna be um, floating. You know those tanks, the um, yeah, the, the sensory, uh, deprivation. sensory deprivation, oh, yeah. yeah, or just really deep meditation too. Yeah, like, yeah. The, like uh, mm-hmm. people that are really into Buddhism and shit, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Report a that. clear state of mind. Yeah, it's like the the human brain has the power to overtake itself. It's so, oh, dude, it's so fascinating. I can't get over how fucking weird humans are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, like. Bro, it's like crazy. completely, like this is very basic mm-hmm. thinking. What the fuck are our noses? <laughs> Dude, well, why? Do, why do these? They're the, they're the effigy that allows us to have the sense of smell. I know, but like, why did it decide to do this? Like, <laughs> why is it the only thing that comes out from my face? It is weird, isn't it? And and it, like we can evolutionarily place it probably. Like there's yeah. there's something that caused us to have it, but why did it? Why did up it, like a note exactly <laughs> that's my that's the point like that's that's what i'm saying like our brains have altered over the years to become what they've become and it's just mm-hmm. like how did we get here how, 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 how did, did we, we get, get here, here? <laughs> but yeah, yeah i i'm it's oh, it's so much to think about it is it, it's crazy isn't it because it's like there is a a very uh base level where we all believe what we're seeing in one moment in time is the state of consciousness it's it's not mm-hmm. a state of consciousness it's the state of consciousness like right it's what absolute reality is exactly but then it's like as soon as we get thrown to a different one we're just like okay this is a different state of consciousness but when we're in one we can't it's hard to conceive of the other unless you actually experience it yeah it's like a another weird thing kind of in the same realm is uh, how we perceive memories. Oh, yeah. It's crazy how much our memories actually alter over mm-hmm. time. Like, we remember shit not at all the way it actually happened. Mm-mm. And we remember shit that never happened. We remember shit that never happened. Exactly. And it's like, what? Like th- my brain has so much fucking power. Yeah, it can do anything it, it wants. Can do <laughs> anything it wants. My, uh, you just have to be able to access those capabilities. My boss yeah. was telling me about her husband, who apparently has these psychosomatic uh, symptoms, um, which basically means that his brain convinces itself that it's in peril, or parts mm-hmm. of his body are in peril when yeah. in reality he's fine. He's just yeah. And he was just like yeah, so he just like spazzed out and just like fell on the floor last night, and I just stared at him. <laughs> and I was like, "Get up, Tom!" <laughs> and I was like, "Damn, get up, Tom, you gotta get up!" <laughs> and then she was like, and he was throwing a hissy fit about not being able to feel his legs. And I'm just like, "Oh my god, I do not want to deal with this. I just want to sleep." And I'm like, "You're like, damn, that's kind of cold." Like y'all got a, <laughs> I got a real loving relationship. Yeah, like I mean, like at least try to help him. <laughs> like be like Tom, just stand up. It's fine. Like it's you'll, fine. See. you'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy though. <laughs> yeah. I the brain's just so fascinating. The I brain. can't, I, just all the functions of it. Yeah. Like, and, and an example of like mental illness, specifically like schizophrenia. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like the scary. fact that that's, it's so weird to think about if you've mm-hmm. ever had like even a suspicion that you have schizophrenia, like for anybody that has the suspicion they have, yeah. they're automatically going to be like, holy shit, what if this yeah. isn't it's real? It's a self-fulfilling like, prophecy. It, like, it's so, oh. I was just thinking about that earlier today because I remember uh, just at younger, when I first was learning what schizophrenia was, I was like, oh my God, what You're if like, I have this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, like what if terrifying. Yeah, yeah, like what if there's a certain person in my life and then like that nobody else has seen, mm-hmm. I've only ever been alone with, yeah. and I'm just kind of like, 
<laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God no. That would, that would just be ridiculous, though. Like, but it's hard because it, are, can schizophrenic people be aware? Like, yeah. To what extent can they be aware? I think they can become fully aware of. Okay. of uh, they, yeah, like his beautiful mind was that guy. Was that guy? Yes, he was a schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think he had paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just so crazy to think about because like. That's just your brain. That's just your brain. Doing what the fuck it wants. And, this and is that's your brain horrifying. Drugs. Like that's, it is. Yeah, unless you're on drugs. Yeah. Then okay. it's the drugs doing to your brain what it wants. Yeah. It'd be like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I also love the study of like the way psychedelics affect the brain. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. boy Kenton knows a lot about that. Let's talk about it, Ken. What's up? Can, can we talk about like personal experiences with drugs is that is that a go for it all right yeah. <laughs> i mean like uh you know i've, I've uh done a, li- uh, a few psychedelics yeah and but a thought that that drug puts into your brain though which is an incredible thought because like like you were you had said it the drug's just doing to you what it wants yeah. and that's how it feels it's like reality is just split. it's it's yeah. it's doing what it wants and you, you're just there for a ride like, uh-huh. you're yeah. like you're like okay exactly. whoa and, and this you, is cool and if yeah. you need to function eventually you have to consciously think the thought mm-hmm. i am in control uh-huh. yeah like there that's what's so cool about the brain too is that you can, to an extent, control it in yeah. any way you want. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to be able to know how to do it. Yeah. yeah. You and have to think the right thoughts. You have to know what mm-hmm. you want to think, and you yeah. just have to commit. Yeah. And there's different theories about how much you can control the brain, but there's certain people that will say that you can like fully map and uh, and change, alter your subconscious processes so that you have effectively full control over like what you're going to think at any given moment. That's... That's it is an incredible theory that's, if that's bonkers because huh. like y- sometimes you just be sitting there and like something you think of something you're like why yeah. like, why, <laughs> why did I think of that exactly yeah. like just ra- random ass shit have you ever had like a I don't know like have you ever been alone and just randomly like said something oh, out yeah. loud and yeah, just been like sure. Why did I say that? I say random shit out loud around other people. Up, <laughs> oh yeah, like usually I'll say something that like just popped into my head that was funny as shit, exactly. and I'll be like, <laughs> nice, <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Colton. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, like just like sitting in my bed at night, silent, just like looking oh, yeah. up at my lights, and, and then I'll just go like, I'll just say like, fucking peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> and, and, and no that, reason. And that, that, that's what that's what yeah. Twitter exists for, you know? Exactly. It's a place to dispose of those thoughts or more le- or more accurately um, project those thoughts onto mm-hmm. the world to shout them into the void. Shout maybe. them into the void. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's another way that reality has been altered. Yeah. Is social media. Like it is. we perceive things the way they're supposed to be yeah. because of what we see on social media nowadays. Uh-huh. Like uh, for an example like just the other day my brother my mm-hmm. nine-year-old brother is yeah. fucking in love with TikTok. Oh, my God. Yeah. It so, makes sense. Yeah. And, like, he's already getting to this point where he's like, why aren't more people liking my video? Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, you don't got to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I was like, and I try, I'm, it's not going to work. He's, you have he, to he, like, reframe what the purpose of social media is yeah, in the first like, place. Like, it's not a place to receive that, or it's not a place to seek, you know, affirmation. It's a, it's a place to to be Express, social yeah it's like but it just so obviously expresses itself and so like it, it it's so easy to fall into the trap because of the way like uh desire in the brain works like every time you get a like it's a hit yeah but brain. isn't that the isn't that the the, the psychology of, mm-hmm. of sociality like that is the that like i feel like social media kind of gets rid of all of the bullshit that we can put on as, hu- as as human beings existing next to one another, trying to communicate with each other and be social, and it just kind of gets rid of all of that, so that like it gets to the heart of what you intend with your social interaction. Mm-hmm. I don't know because a lot of the time, what I'm intending when I'm talking uh, relies heavily on like on un- uh, non linguistic. Uh, um, what's the what's the word? Body language, like okay, on or or just non non verbal Verbal-ish. cues. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I think, so, like, remove the aspect of, of interpersonal communication. Like, interpersonal communication, obviously, is, is, a, is a dynamic that you can't replicate anywhere else because there's no other place where you are in the, the presence of another consciousness. Like, you have, to, you have to kind of, like, like when you're around other people, you're, fo- you're forced to kind of ponder what they're thinking, right? 
Yeah. Like, do you, do you think that's true? Like, if you, you, you feel, in you feel, yeah. If you're, if you're like, in an active conversation, you feel aware of in a social or space. Or if it's completely silent. If sure. you are not talking, that's even more likely yeah. for you to wonder what someone else is thinking. Exactly. So it's like it's like you're aware in a social space, right? Mm-hmm. So if if you are allowed the opportunity to have that social interaction without actually having to involve yourself in a space where like these like the awareness gives you the pressure of uh, you know acting normal. Quote yeah, unquote. quote unquote. Uh, you're allowed to just get to the point of how you would express yourself if you were able to control every single bit of it. And it's that's a weird thing that no generation before ours exactly. really has had access exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like we we're just we we don't even know yet how that long term that's gonna. But it's gonna like, bring that up like five minutes ago. <laughs> it's amazing that this yeah. has come back around. But I mean, like, it's I'm so fascinated and excited to learn what the fuck this is doing mm-hmm. to us because exactly. like it's obviously affecting us yeah there's zero doubt about yeah. that i just want to know how much yeah and like literally what is altering our realities exactly because of social media yeah, yeah. and it's like that definitely has to change like not only just like maybe our dopamine receptors and like mm-hmm. how like how we crave dopamine and like just like the modes in which we crave it and the frequency at which we crave it mm-hmm but it it has to change like just like how you express yourself as a human being there is a uh, i i mean like to go along with that the dopamine receptors that we get like we get it because of our social media we get like a uh, every time we get a like like you mm-hmm. said we but like when you look at older generations when they like hate on you for all the like Mm-hmm. millennial shit we do gen yeah. z shit we do <laughs> yeah. they're like man you guys don't work hard well that's because that doesn't hit my dopamine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe it hit yours 50 years ago do- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you think about the broader implications of that too and uh really I'm, I'm starting to realize this more and more like just learning about things that are happening in the world i think that right now there's a lot more people than there has been in the past that are starting to question structures like uh, the U.S. government, religion, like capitalism, like religion, like uh, everything, yeah. everything more than ever is being questioned right now. Yeah. And I mean, it's always been questioned. Mm-hmm. There's always been other like, but it is more than ever in the light of day because yeah. of social media. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's pretty fucking dope. Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> to crazy. put it simply, it's pretty dope. <laughs> and it's it's kind of like that collective consciousness that I feel like brings another awareness in a social space that you always have to be Mm -hmm. conscious of because like when like when you get involved in a physical social space right you have to always be aware of how you projected yourself on into a a non-material social space social media so like that has the alternatively like influence you in physical social spaces right yeah like there are people like you see it on twitter all the time where people are like i i pray that certain people do not find my twitter yeah because they're not the same person mm-hmm. to that person. Like, exactly. That that's another thing from Mr. Robot that is discussed mm-hmm. is when he talks about uh, obliterating. Oh shit! Yeah. His other half, I think, it was the word he was yeah. using. It's like, and his therapist said obliteration is not the answer. Yeah. And he's like, she's wrong. Obliteration is always the answer. <laughs> we are constantly doing it. Yeah. We are constantly changing ourselves for uh-huh. the people around us, smashing parts of ourselves down, bringing other parts of ourselves up. Yeah. So nobody really is who they are. But in like one situation, and it's when you're alone. Exactly. That's yeah. when that's when you really are yeah. who you are. Um, yeah. And it's fucking bonkers. It's crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know anyone. We don't know anybody. I mean, there, there, there's interesting theories in philosophy about that too, though, because when when you're not around anybody, like when you're just yourself, what like are you just being the self you're most comfortable with? Like, yeah. like, or maybe even like. There is, like, maybe you're just a a total schizophrenic, like, and your thoughts are just going to go everywhere, like, there is no one consistent line of thought that you're going to pursue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude. That's wild. That's really weird to think about. But, yeah, like, when he was talking about that in the show, it's a thought that Mm -hmm. I've had, like, obviously, we change ourselves for Mm -hmm. certain people, it's just how how people work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but, like... what would the world be like if everyone was the same, was their truest self uh-huh. all the time in every situation? I don't know. That's weird. Would it be better or would it be worse? Honestly. I think it'd be madness. Yeah. I think it'd be worse. I think it'd be a lot worse. I, I don't think people naturally coexist. We always have to make concessions to coexist with other people. 
Yeah, yeah. and it's going to take like a. That's the nature of culture. That, that it is the it is effectively like it, it's something that is, is cherished, but it's also something that sets the rules, sets the guidelines for how you how can you work in society. In society, yeah. yeah. And it, it it says what the norms are. It says what's okay and what's not okay. Like, and that that's what forms our reality. Mm -hmm. Is the way society works. It's a world. It's a constant effort of world building by the human mind. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's there's uh, anthropological views that human consciousness couldn't have evolutionarily like sprung up uh, if there wasn't multiple people because like it's just not something that would make sense oh yeah uh, would because survive there's only it's one the, the, the idea yeah, that you, you have to be to able have... to understand each yeah. other mm -hmm. and to try and learn more about each yeah, other and uh, this is a lot of what we've been reading in um in philosophy of race is just like this idea that language is specifically the bridge that allows you to reaffirm your existence like you you first of all like uh, I've given this ex explanation in class, and I actually kind of like it. When you, when you, uh, and I got this from Kitten. When you first come into life, like you know one thing, and that is that you were once a nothingness. But you can also know that you are now or somethingness, or think that you are now or somethingness. But that somethingness isn't actually validated until you interact with someone else, which reaffirms your presence. Uh, yeah. uh, otherwise, like you could say something and nobody respond to you which makes you inherently question are you even real am i real so it's like you you have to you have to kind of bridge the gap humans are inherently social beings you have to bridge the gap in order to know that you exist which seems to be a necessary condition of our existence the question is why jesus fucking christ <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a good explanation Ken. you know I, uh, the uh, uh Lacan, uh, the psychoanalyst, is deeply interested in the question of what happens to human consciousness when a baby sees its reflection for the first time. <laughs> because it's like... Yo, it's have you ever shown... Like, I have, like, purposely taken my little brothers and sisters, like, to oh, the mirror yeah. and been like, look at yourself. I try to do that. I try to <laughs> like, do I want to see how you react to I this. I try to do that to my dogs all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's because, like, the, the thought that they have in their yeah. head probably looks nothing like that ugly fucking yeah. thing they're seeing in the mirror. Oh, yeah. That, like, and that's what's... Oh, my God. That's what's fucking crazy. Is like, apparently... I've read this, and I've, I've read into it in a few different studies, mm -hmm. is that, like, we don't actually look like what we think we look like. Yeah, no. No, no. In the slightest. It's weird. And it, because it, even if... Even if you're looking at a picture of yourself or mm -hmm. you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you have such a set idea of what you look like yeah. that you can literally alter what you think you look like while looking at yourself. Damn. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. It's in the brain, bro. It's, it's weird. so like, powerful. It does it, incredible things. Damn. It, 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 I mean that only works to an extent. Yeah, obviously, yeah, like yeah. I can't be a white guy and like think I'm black. Like that's not how that works. <laughs> the, the Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> I know you've seen yes, it. Yes. <laughs> Guys, we gotta tell Sperry about that. <laughs> yeah, we. I don't she know what she's gonna that say. That is hilarious. Uh, what, what, what she? I don't know. I don't know. I sent it to Kyle, and I think he when I come up it. next week, that's that's an ep that's the episode breakdown we should do. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. We should oh, just yeah. do a Childish Gambino segment. Then. Oh, fuck Watch yeah. Bye -bye we'll have Kenton on again. Yeah, yeah. All right, but anyway, yeah, the brain is fucking weird. I think that's the conclusion we can come to. I think to. that's the conclusion. Um, I, I mean, this conversation could keep going. If you'd like it to, please keep going because I'm wildly entertained. <laughs> Good? Yeah. yeah. Good? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good conversation, guys. I feel good about that. I do. I do too. Okay. Let's go into the next segment. We got uh, movies, the best sequel films of all time. And the worst. And we got a few of the worst up here. And all of them you'll notice are like like real deal like franchise movies. Yeah, They're not yeah. like a, like Godfather Part Two. That's a critically really yeah, good yeah, exactly. sequel movie, but like we're gonna do This is just the, first the more fun we ones. Thought of. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the recent ones that are just a little bit more out there. Yeah. So but to start, what is your favorite sequel movie of all time? It's gotta be Dark Knight. Like, God, what a fucking The first time I watched movie. that movie, I was like, I feel like an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> this, this took away my innocence. <laughs> no, nah, but I, I, re I really wasn't, though, because I watched that movie, like, years later and was like, wow, there were so many things I did not pick up on this plot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like it, it was just way too complex, but it was so well done. Like, it was so, like, that the fact that it could grab such a uh, wide-ranging audience and be about the subject matter that it was mm -hmm. and have not only the, the, the um, like, film like 
uh, what, what do you want to call it? Uh, like the film acumen that it had, like it okay. was a well done. It was film. critically acclaimed. Critically yeah. acclaimed. Yeah. yeah, and it was, oh god, and it's not supposed to be critically acclaimed. Really, it's a superhero movie. Exactly. Those are not supposed to. It be. It was the first movie. superhero movie that people watched and was like, wait, those hold on. like they feel like <laughs> characters that are just like, and that's the thing you could say about like Batman, really is that he's more of a vigilante mm-hmm. than a superhero, which automatically makes him a little more real to you yeah. because he doesn't have superpowers. Exactly. I think it just makes him more fun to watch and like more relatable, yeah. too. Exactly. Because, like, he's just a dude. Yeah, he's, he's just a like, guy with a lot of money. A yeah. lot of money and like really good at fucking getting around quickly. And doing <laughs> he can swing on a grappling hook yeah, like 500 shit. feet. Yo, <laughs> I mean, Somehow. get the shit. Nah, but like, I feel like that was really one of the first good like real good um, superhero, superhero movies until the Marvel ones I, it, it really was and what year was The Dark Knight 2008 was, was that 2008 okay. which is crazy Iron Man yeah uh, like, uh, Iron Man year. came out 2008 yeah it was the same year as Iron but Man but I think Dark Knight's is, uh, Iron Man 1 is a good ass movie but like Dark Knight's light years ahead of that oh I agree and like the crazy and, thing and, yeah, uh, keep yeah it, it was just like when you like watch that movie it doesn't even feel real like and this is how christopher nolan batman movies were was like it felt like you were watching like gotham city not necessarily batman it felt like it because the point of batman films was to feel gritty it was supposed to feel like holy shit like this is dark yeah yeah They've tried that with other DC movies, mm-hmm. and it hasn't worked because none of those other characters are Batman. Exactly. You can't do that with other characters. Mm-hmm. And like even like going back to the old Batman movies, like when Jack Nichol- yeah. Nicholas was in them and stuff, it's, or Nicholson, mm-hmm. it's just not as good it's because as it's, good. it's not the dark, gritty, mm-hmm. Gotham City version of Batman, mm-hmm. and that's just not going to And then easy. like fucking Heath Ledger just sets the bar for the Joker. Like I feel like I'm never going to think of a Joker as as more like when I think of Joker Heath Ledger's the first thing it comes oh to it mind. has to be yeah. I mean it, the new Joker movie coming out with uh, I think Joaquin it'll be Fiend, good I think it'll be good too and I don't think I'll be able to have an objective opinion about who's the best Joker it, I will well, always go with Heath okay, Ledger okay so right here's, the, here's the thing here's a problem that I'm gonna have with the Joker movie is that it's not a Batman movie because I feel like Joker is is more compelling when he's facing off against the Batman because they have the like probably one of the craziest relationships in, in superhero Any, or cinema, all. really, yeah. anything. I mean, I'm excited for it because it's like a. I can't remember. Is it is it a Martin Scorsese movie? Wait, is Martin movie? Scorsese doing it? The Joker movie that's coming out. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know either. I'll, I'll have to look into it. I can't remember, but I remember seeing something that said that it was going to be a lot like the character studies that Martin Scorsese has done in the past. Uh-huh. Which I'm really excited about that because the Joker is so is fucking batshit like yeah and it's the dive into how he became the way he was like okay todd phillips yeah todd phillips uh was the writer of the hangover oh shit <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to go ahead and uh, sleep on this sleep on this man keep doing it oh shit i think i was listening to a, a podcast and they were talking about that they're like yeah everyone's th- saying like it can't, it the hangover good, yeah the yeah. hangover guy's doing it and they're like don't you realize like like this guy like just... knows what the fuck he's doing the mm-hmm. hangover movies were good like yeah and they, they, they might were... have been comedy but that's because like you yeah. don't only have to write comedy it's it's really. the best bro like it is a bro comedy and like oh, yeah. you can't expect the bro comedy to be a serious movie like yeah. it's like that movie uh high five or what was it tag have, oh, didn't yeah. you tell me that like when you watched it you were like ah I mean it's funny I guess but it's like not a great movie exactly. it's just like yeah. it's and a bro th- that's the point of it like yeah, you're not stupid. supposed to go oh my god I fucking love and, that and, movie and like not only was The Hangover just stupid in that brilliant. bro movie but it was brilliant stupid it was just like yeah. some shit that everyone wanted to experience after they saw it it's just ugh I fucking love movies like that I mean yeah. like The Hangover Step Brothers like it's yeah. all these basic slapstick exactly and there's a place for slapstick oh and like these aren't really slapstick because slapstick is like really yeah it's like like sitcom-ish. stupid yeah. like it's but I mean obviously the humor in these can be stupid yeah but it's, and just it's very... a it's a more smart kind of funny than slapstick comedy you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah it's and, like a Barry yeah that's what that reminds me of a lot is mm-hmm. like that entire series it reminds me of The Hangover and the way it's really written. okay it's just uh in that way which is interesting because that's about a guy who kills people right mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, Barry, he kills people. He's an assassin. It's pretty badass. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, also, Todd Phillips' co-writer on uh, the second or third Hangover movie did the uh, did the Chernobyl series. Oh, 
That's so what you, it was. That's you what they keep said. Sleeping on it. That's, like, what, that's what they said. They're like, yeah, they act like this dude doesn't know what he's doing, but he literally like made Chernobyl like yeah. right after the Hangover, and I was like, like oh shit, it's brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, I think you got to go Dark Knight. And he's been <laughs> if if I I think I recognize this guy from a lot of movies like acting. I don't know, maybe. Uh, but, I don't know. He seen he just looks familiar. For some yeah. Reason. But back to the Dark Knight. It is one of the best sequel films that has ever existed. Oh, yeah. You can't mention sequel films without uh, Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. That is a, that is a Star Wars classic. I mean, it, it is most commonly referred to as the best Star Wars movie. Uh-huh. And I agree. I understand if you disagree because I fucking <laughs> love all of them. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, second one in particular of the original trilogy, fifth in total, uh-huh. <laughs> so confusing, uh, is, in my opinion, the best. Wait, I mean, which just, one? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. It, it, I feel like it was really the movie that, like, it, it kind of fueled the Star Wars fandom. Like, it was yeah, the like reason I, that, mm-hmm. like, when you think of Star Wars, you thought of Darth Vader, you thought of Empire Strikes Back. Like, yeah, you thought of... Luke, I am your father. <laughs> no! <laughs> Dude, there are a few things that humans are born inherently knowing. Oh, yeah. And the first thing that everyone knows as soon as they are born is that Luke Skywalker is Darth Vader's son. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a fact. I, I don't know why I knew it, but going into the first <laughs> movie, yeah. I was like... That guy's Luke's dad. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's Luke's dad. Like, you're like, and I don't know to... why I knew it. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it, maybe that's what makes Star Wars so unique and uh, why everyone loves it. Because it's a story where it's like you know what's going to happen. You just want to see it happen. And, and it's so... And, <laughs> you like, watch Star Wars. Yeah. You can't escape it. Like, yeah. you, you know it's going to be fucking good. Exactly. And it's always entertaining. But it's always pretty predictable. Right, <laughs> right. Anybody who didn't watch Empire Strikes Back in theaters for the... Like, when it was first showing... Oh, already yeah. knew that uh, Luke was as soon. I think that movie came mm-hmm. out in 1980 or 1979. Uh, damn, were they that old? They're that yeah, old. They're that old. It's kind of cr- like the first one was 1977. Yeah, no, I know that for a fact. The so film I'm thinking quality the second is one not was, good. No, and what's crazy though is that it was way ahead of its time. Exactly for way the graphics ahead of its it time. it had. Yeah, and I mean like you go back, you watch it now, you're not going to be satisfied if you've never Just seen the Star Wars. We've movies. reached an unreal level. Oh my god, like it's fucking crazy like yeah. Avengers Endgame literally had an entire alien invasion play out that like looked real as fuck the Look. world was being destroyed <laughs> earth exploded like, <laughs> and then you were just like that didn't happen that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. I That's remember watching real. that in theaters like just being like Whoa! Like it, it was one of those moments where I was like, I can't like look everywhere on this fucking big ass screen all at once like what is happening <laughs> there was a that reminds me of a part in that 70s show when they're watching the Star Wars movie in theaters, the very first one. And uh, there's a point that happens that all of them are kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this movie. Then, like, something happens on screen where it's like, and, it <laughs> and then it's just like, and then they all, they all go, whoa. <laughs> and that's just, that's, whoa. and like, that's what Star Wars has always been. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's, that's what it has been about. To uh, balance the franchise out, though, they do have one of the worst sequel movies of all time even though technically it's a prequel it came out after the original movie so yeah. it's a sequel yeah we'll count it as it. we'll count it a phantom menace that was shit that not movie great, sucks not a great movie very long and drawn out and honestly just fucking hard to follow and boring <laughs> like I mean, so much politics so yeah, much like, politics and i but mean like if you were a star wars fan yeah. who like loved it when it came out like you watched that in theaters that was probably a lot more interesting for you yeah but, like, I watched them when I was young, uh-huh. and I loved them, and now I go back and watch them, and I'm kind of like, God. Yeah. I just wanted to see more Darth Maul. Exactly. exactly. Like, why, exactly. Couldn't, why couldn't Darth Maul be a bigger part of this universe yeah. instead of just like that? Like, yeah. He gets cut in half. He got cut in half. <laughs> he was the most, he was the coolest villain yeah. <coughs> in pretty much any Star Wars movie, I think, besides, uh-huh. you know, Darth Vader. Like, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's the ultimate villain. Uh-huh. But... Darth Maul, smallest role for any villain in any of the movies, uh-huh. and probably the most badass. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. But, honestly, though, I feel like those movies just, like, it's like watching Aristotle's The Republic. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that sounds like the most boring exactly thing. That and that's and that's what it is. Yeah, it's just it's just like, but it, it's like politics from a like a different galaxy. So like we're just like yeah. Well, I mean I don't like they've uh <laughs> that is a thing. genre that has been further progressed though. Yeah, I think is the politics of outer space. Yeah, like the way. They but it's all just business. really human politics. Oh yeah, it's all human politics just applied to a different yeah. galaxy. But yeah, it's neat to think of how like different conceptions of it have been tried out. Mm-hmm. Have you ever read the book or watched the movie Dune? I have heard I've heard I I've wa- I watched I think I watched it be made. I think I watched it like several years ago, yeah, but I, I don't it remember I it. And I, I remember watching it and being like I should not have watched this yet. <laughs> like I should hold off on this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's very intricate politics, yeah. but the book is incredible. Yeah, I think it's... I watched it when I was like 13 or 14. Yeah, no, I watched and it I, super young too and I just remember being And I was I was kind of like Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't really get any of this. <laughs> Some giant ass worms. <laughs> Some giant ass worms. I thought the same thing in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> there were some giant <laughs> ass worms. Giant okay, but that worms. giant ass worm was cool and almost ate the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. You gotta you gotta give Star Wars the credit where it's due. They have some of the most iconic I don't know, things of all yeah. time. Like mm-hmm. there's characters, villains, mm-hmm. just like the Millennium Falcon, like you don't even have to watch Star Wars, and you you've really heard don't. of the Millennium Falcon, <laughs> no, exactly. and that's just a ship in the movie. Like yeah. that's not, it's nothing. I mean, it's a it's a big deal if you watch the movies, but uh-huh. if you don't watch the movies, there's no reason for you to know that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which is the crazy part about it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I mean, like even fucking like Mace Windu, of the original prequels. Like, fucking Samuel L. Jackson. Fucking fly, motherfucker. There's Samuel so many ja- theories like Samuel that he Jackson, still exists. I feel like... like better. Oh, I mean, God. If Samuel L. Jackson popped up in the next movie, you saw like a purple lightsaber just... Shroom, I'd be like... <laughs> in no! The, in the canon somewhere. I, th- I don't know if it's in the cartoons or what. The Darth Maul still exists. So if that's true, I think Mace Windu can still exist. Yeah, I mean, It's exactly. a similar type of fall. Yeah. I mean, uh, Chancellor Palpatine. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be in this next movie, and apparently he's gonna be a pretty big part. Uh-huh. Like according to the trailer, obviously Star Wars is notorious for misleading. But yeah. judging by it, he's a pretty relevant part of the movie. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when- I thought that boy was dead. <laughs> <laughs> he looked pretty dead. And, and looked, then what's, yeah. what's really dumb to me is that like they don't even surprise us with that reintroduction. No. Like. There was no indication that this man was still alive, and then they just dropped a trailer with him in it. Yeah, <laughs> basically. I was like, like okay, Loki, uh, fuck you. Like, that was, <laughs> I wanted that to be a surprise. Actually, <laughs> the original trailer, it was a surprise, because, but I would have preferred it in the movie. Yeah. The end of the trailer where they like show like the Star Wars uh-huh. logo and it's like, yeah, bang, yeah. Bang, bang. and like the music fades out and you're ha 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 ha, which yeah. is his yeah. laugh. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. You're like, oh shit. I was like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I fucking love that. <laughs> but yeah, the Star Wars film franchise, it's had several, several, several great sequels. Several. I mean, pretty much all of them besides the one and two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And two wasn't it that yeah. bad. It was just not as good as the others. Yeah. Uh, I mean, two introduced, like, there were some good scenes in two. Oh, for sure. Like, And it introduced some of the cooler villains mm-hmm. in the canon of Star Wars with uh, Jango and Bubba Fett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, I love their storyline. Th- that new series coming out that I think oh, yeah, is based Bubba around Fett. Bubba Fett, yeah. uh-huh. I'm so fucking excited. Oh, yeah. Is that on the... Uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, General Grievous. General Grievous. Too, right? Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Mm-hmm. They're, I want to see how they make him look. He might look like a fucking badass. Yo. <laughs> Dude, General Grievous, especially in like the rework with the modern technology yeah. we have, because... When General Grievous was in the movies in like he 2001 was real and two, puppet, I think. Puppetish. Yeah, like it was like it was kind of like okay, like I get the point. They just didn't have the ability. Exactly, but now that shit's gonna be crazy. Which is crazy. It's like they were thinking way ahead of their time. They're just like we don't have the means to really do this, but we're so gonna we're do gonna the best with what we can't like, like have. And then you know maybe 20, 30 years later they'll redo it and they'll actually give it justice. And yeah, that's like what's happening. by episode three though there was a good scene with General Grievous. You remember the one where he fights Obi Wan Kenobi? Oh fuck yeah! And oh, Obi Wan's yeah. riding that thing. Yeah. Where he's, uh, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. that's the noise it makes. <laughs> but like Ger- General Grievous, like like shoulders Dude. off his jacket. Oh that shit so separates dope. out his arms. Oh. And then he like Iconic. spins all of them. It's like yeah. Iconic. Oh, Iconic. God, I fuck. God, now I gotta go watch all the Star Wars. Fuck. Movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Uh, but 
you know, let's move on. We've been talking about Star Wars for a second. We have, we have. Uh, Kill Bill Volume 2. Fucking classic. There is debate as to whether or not this is technically a sequel movie. Because technically it is just Tarant- one long movie, yeah. Volume 1 and 2. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino's weird like that, though. Like, you can't... You his his movie sh- like there's theories that all of his movies exist in the same fucking like place place yeah like, like the same universe. it's just the same universe like different stories and just which random shit. honestly that would make sense yeah, I mean, like you could sense. do that like but just like think about that like a man is just creating films of what happens in his brain yeah like he's just like you know what I'm gonna rewrite the way things have worked yeah, things isn't that work. a lot of good art though like yeah. oh yeah any sort of art I feel like is just like projecting what is going on in yeah. your brain if it's being done well. absolutely and that's always what Quentin Tarantino has been able mm-hmm. to do well like mm-hmm. when we went and saw Once Upon a Time in that's Hollywood like, like it just reminds you every time you watch a Tarantino movie how unique his film style is like you're just like I've never seen anything quite like this yeah and one thing I really fucking hate on Twitter is the amount of people who hate on people who like Quentin I know. Tarantino. I'm just like, yo, yeah. he's objectively a good filmmaker. Exactly. <laughs> like, you, I don't care how fucking like absurd he gets or like how like explicit he gets. Like, the dude just makes you feel things. Yeah. Like, and the point of art is all about the interpretation. Exactly. If like there are arguments that Quentin Tarantino really isn't a deep filmmaker. He's just making you think the shit's deep by like letting you that's what it. that's what everyone says which just proves to you that they just don't understand it. that's my that's what i'm thinking like bro anything can be art if you want to interpret it that exactly. way yeah, and even even if he did just throw it out there with no intended meaning in mind why does that matter exactly if it like, can be interpreted yeah, if it that can, is art yeah. yeah that's what like paintings yeah. like abstract paintings are all about how you interpret the painting itself mm-hmm. like and obviously there are paintings you look at and you're like, man, fuck that thing. Fuck that thing. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, you automatically have to respect the artistic nature of it. Uh-huh. And that's why I can't stand it when people hate on Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's annoying. It's stupid. But yeah, fuck Kill you. Bill. Kill Bill is fucking glorious. Kill Bill. And um, this isn't a sequel, just because we're on the topic. Pulp Fiction. What a oh, good movie. That's going to be our 1994 movie. I think it came out in 94. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. That'll be Damn. a good one to talk about. That shit just blew my mind. So good. Like, I mean, and it was so fucking weird. I didn't watch that shit till I was like 16 or 17, uh-huh. and I'm really glad I, I waited that long to watch it because there's zero chance I would have understood yeah. it before that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I just loved how it, it was just like a fucking circle. Like, it, And there's no real way we can perceive what the timeline is here. Exactly. Like, it's just yeah. you're plugging in pieces Different wherever they fit. <laughs> I just like I had I had this part from one of the Samuel Jackson quotes from the movie stuck in my head a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I kept I think I I think I might have mentioned it in every single class I was in, just like to prove some sort of point, just because it's what was in my brain at the time. Yeah. But is the quote where he was like, uh, "A few things there 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 are no knowns and then unknown <laughs> or known unknowns." Uh, people always forget about the other one though, which is the unknown unknowns, <laughs> things that we can't ever know. And yeah. I was like, I like we would just get on some weird topic in class, and I'd just be like. That's a fascinating thing we could have also expanded upon. The unknown unknowns. What don't we know that we don't even know we don't know? That's just the whole <laughs> Well, if we trace that uh, quote back to its origin, Donald Rumsfeld said it regarding uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Well, uh, apparently we can't know that we don't know that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. <laughs> God, that logic makes no sense being said out loud. But yeah. it didn't make sense when he said it either. It's well, yeah, but like, there's a way that it connects with your brain that you kind of understand it. You're yeah. like, you're like, it's just, I mean, it's an, ex- have, it's a double, it's a double negative. Yeah. Unknown unknowns are just unknowns. Have, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double negative. Yeah. Have you seen um, uh, Vice? I have not watched that yet, and I really need Donald to. Rum, uh, Steve Carell plays Donald Rumsfeld in there. Ooh, okay. Very, like, I love it. Because, like, like, once you watch that movie, you understand why Donald Rumsfeld would have said something like that. Like, he was just that shady of a guy, like, and he was so upfront about it. Like, he's just, like, people would ask him questions, he's just like, hmm, I don't know, fuck you. What's funny like, is that quote was probably him just being like, fucking, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Like, exactly. I'm just going to say some shit that y'all will... Except. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just like, I'm just going to misdirect you with my words. Like, if I say some shit that... Uh, That's really what politics is. Yeah. Oh, yeah definitely. <laughs> Isn't that all debate, too? I mean, yeah. 
It's ju- I mean, isn't that what life is? <laughs> just trying yeah. to yeah. get people to understand. <laughs> Doesn't matter how, how it's going. But yeah. Pulp Fiction, that's a really good movie. Yeah. And uh, there's a little Easter egg in the uh, uh, Marvel movies uh-huh. with Nick Fury when, uh, he's, oh, when he's perceived dead. On his uh, gravestone, it says whatever Bible verse he recites in <laughs> fiction. So the one that's like, uh, my righteous fury yeah. will befall. You. Uh-huh. Like, bro. That's it. I saw that. I was like. That, that whole first title sequence in Pulp Fiction, just like, I was just like, I am in. Dude. I like, lo- and any movie Uma Thurman's in. Exactly. I love it. But Uma just Thurman. like the, the apartment scene, funny, hilarious as shit. And oh. then th- in the car, when a fucking John Travolta <laughs> blows his head off. It's just like, and he's like, what the fuck? He's like, I, I shot him. I shot him. Like, <laughs> it was just, it oh, was he just, goes, ah, damn. <laughs> he's like, ah, damn. John Travolta yeah. is an interesting actor because... I can never read him. His face looks so weird. He looks like... His original face looks like he had plastic surgery. And then he had plastic surgery on that face. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's yeah. just really he weird. He double down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and... You would not expect him to sound or be the way he is, judging yeah. by the way he looks. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't seem like the type of dude he is. Exactly. I don't even know how to explain it. He's just off-putting in a way that's different than everybody else. Mm-hmm. It's really weird when you think about it. Because I don't, I don't think I exactly like John Travolta at all. I don't, I've never have. I've always felt weird vibes from him. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think Pulp Fiction is my favorite movie of his. Like other, all the other ones, like I've seen his other, like and I've seen his good movies, and like, like they're not bad. They're I mean, good. like Grease, like that's yeah, a classic. Exactly. Um, I'm thinking that, of, Grease Two can go under the uh, worst oh, sequel films of yeah. all time if we want. Yeah. Because I fucking despise that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, he I, I understand why he has the the credibility he does. It's just like yeah, he's always rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, it's just ugh, he's just uh, my I don't know. He puts off major old white guy vibes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And even when he was young. <laughs> was just, yeah. Major old white guy vibes. Judging just by the way he looked. Because in Pulp Fiction, not at all. Like, yeah, that's no. not at all the vibe he puts not off. Not at all. I love that, uh, I love that scene where uh, Uma and him are at the uh, the restaurant where they dance at. Mm-hmm. They do the twist. Yeah, it was, that was one of the best scenes in the movie. Fucking love that. God, yeah. That's so, I remember watching that and I was just like, what the fuck? That was another moment I had with the Wu-Tang series. When they go into the animations and shit. I remember I was high as fuck watching it the first time that it, that it happened. I was just like... It was like one of those moments where you're high and you're just like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like you, you locked in on it. Yeah. You kept watching it. Exactly. And then and like, for, and then like several, several minutes in, you were like, wait. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, wait, wait, this fucking just transformed to a cartoon? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you're like, oh. <laughs> the fuck? That's I was hilarious. just like, am I still watching like Wu-Tang? Like, <laughs> and that's, and any show that they use that trope where they kind of, they mix in and out with animation mm-hmm. and real life, it... I feel like that's inherently a Tarantino like yeah thing even though like Tarantino never did it with him in animation or anything yeah. but like just these sidebars uh-huh. that are out there and wild I don't know that there were it, many other filmmakers doing that before he was and I feel like there's this this mentality within Quentin Tarantino movies where you know like thoughts are not connected and it's like the thoughts and rea- like I feel like it's a more real portrayal of how stories happen. I've always thought about this, like the, the how story structure happens is funny as fuck because where did we get that? We had to develop that based off of just our own reasoning and logic as to how a story should be told. But that's not necessarily how we tell stories. Like when we tell stories, we want to tell the 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 moments from it that like we care about, right? Yeah. Like that's what the point of it is. Well, like. I, I am motivated to tell you a story about my day because this thing happened and then this thing happened and these things were like weird, right? Mm-hmm. But like we don't like think like oh there was the um, the the rising action there was the uh, you had to set the status quo first and then yeah. you had the uh, you, you rose to the the climax and this is the climax and then I'm gonna tell you this is the climax and then it's gonna go down we're gonna have we're gonna the resolve everything action. <laughs> and then here I'm gonna tell you how things get resolved. What stories do humans tell that get resolved? <laughs> like that's just not how like human like stories have human react yeah like, like that's, that's not even how life that's yeah. not that's just not life yeah exactly and it's like we had to we just or how we perceive life we just fabricated this mm. this method that thought that was most logical to us about how to tell a story but i feel like tarantino's just like fuck that shit like exactly he, here's he's, just there are so many scenes in 
Tarantino films where you're just kind of like, I don't know why this is happening. Exactly. But I fucking love it. Exactly. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, well. There will I mean, be silence for like 15 minutes in a Tarantino movie. <laughs> yeah, there will where be. Where you're like, okay. Okay. I uh-huh. get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it, it's only scenes and where words aren't y- necessary. You remember but. when we were watching Once Upon a Time, uh, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we kept being like, damn, is this movie almost over? Like, yeah. And you're just like, like, damn, I thought that was like kind of the, the thing. Like, <laughs> then, then the thing happens and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're and then like, the movie just ends, and you're just like... You're like, wait. <laughs> wait, and then you, like, if you go back and think about what he was portraying, and, like, just this... I have to feel like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a different story for Tarantino because it was based on real historical events. Yeah. Uh, and it was unique because, like, you knew what the next events that followed were, and you're just... Or, like, that would ha- normally have happened. You're just yeah. like, wait, he, did he just rewrite, like, did the Manson just murders? Did he burn that woman alive? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? No. So that's just that completely out wild. there for you. Like, yeah, that's, no, that's just it's wild. <laughs> like, did he just smash her head with a beer bottle? He like, like he like meets the Manson family, but you don't really realize it's the Manson family until they go like, "Oh, hey, is Charlie here?" <laughs> and, and you're like, you're just like, wait, wait who's Charlie? Charles and, Manson. <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh no, you, you know how Charlie gets," and we're just just like, <laughs> we're like, how does Charlie get? <laughs> <laughs> We're like, we know how Charlie gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was such okay. an interesting. You seen that video on Twitter where it's like, no matter how you feel about him, <laughs> Charles Manson's speaking straight facts here, and it's him like seventies. He's like, dab 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 dab. He's like actually trying to speak, and he's like, dab 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 dab. That man probably did a lot of psychedelics. And then every. <laughs> Because the same thing happened with Ozzy Osbourne, a different yeah. video, <laughs> like the exact same caption, just with Ozzy Osbourne in place. Yeah, that <laughs> is yeah. really your brain on psychedelics, though. Like me and Ken can attest to this. Like you can't follow a conversation. Like, yeah. <laughs> you just can't do it. But yeah, Kill Bill Volume Two. That's Kill a Bill. solid film. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's kind of run through the rest of these. We've uh, yeah. we're we're on the hour twenty. I mean, I feel here. like those are the big three. Those were the first three that came to our mind. Those were the first three that we thought of. I mean, uh, and more recently we had a uh, you know Infinity War and Endgame. Infinity War and Endgame. We've already spoken to the Marvel movies well a lot movies. in in past episodes. Yeah. I don't feel like we really need to elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, those are brilliant. Uh, we also had a uh, John Wick two up here. And uh, the only reason I threw that up there is because I watched it recently. Uh-huh. It's not, like, one of the best sequel movies of all time. It's fucking Keanu Reeves. It's one of the best sequel movies of all time. Well, it's it, fucking it's, Keanu... Re- no, listen. I'm, I'm not going to juxtapose it's Keanu you in Reeves. Way. I'm, a, I'm completely okay, agreeing. Okay, okay, I'm complete. I'm not saying it's the he best is, sequel of all time. You just have to understand that. Oh, yeah, I okay. do. Obviously, I understand that. He's my guy. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's not one of the best sequel movies of all time. But like like I said, Keanu Reeves is in it. But it's like uh, in 200 years, we will look back on this time period, and this will John Wick Two will be an artifact that we look back on as godly. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Keanu Reeves will be a deity. <laughs> <laughs> by this time, presumably yes. Presumably, I'd assume so. I mean, judging by the way society's going, we oh, got yeah. a, we got a celebrity who's never done anything in politics as our president it's only a matter of time before in several hundred years he we're gonna be worshiping celebrities that exist you like know now. they said jesus would return to earth and walk amongst this as a normal human keanu reeves <laughs> he looks, he, the resemblance is there it's it's uncanny really it's, <laughs> it's uncanny that is a fact <laughs> but yeah john wick 2 it's better than the he first died one for our sins keanu reeves did <laughs> 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 but yeah i Speaking to the John Wick franchise, I haven't seen the third one yet, but what I've heard about it is that they just keep progressing. Uh-huh. And, like, the universe, like, the canon it, of John Wick, yeah. there are so many possibilities. Like, there are spin-offs they could do that I would be wildly so interested in without movie, Keanu Reeves. Isn't this movie centered around him being, like, an assassin and trying to not be an assassin, but still ending up killing a people in order to not be an assassin? Dude, it's fucking bonkers. I've used bonkers so many times this so it, it's like I've it's never like, used that word before in my life. Bonkers is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's a good one though. It's, oh yeah, I like it. I'm gonna start using it. <laughs> it's it's like uh if you will, um shit. What was the thing I was thinking of? It was John uh, Wick getting in and out of the assassin. Jason game. Bourne. It and that that's a that's a subject on the Shea Serrano podcast okay. about John Wick is like what are the where does John Wick stand yeah. in place of all these solo badass assassin movies so yeah. you had like the transporter with jason statham and you had not as good as born, born you had the born series yeah. with matt damon and like 
that movie set the bar for me for spy movies, like assassin movies. Like, and like Mission Impossible, like Mission the, Impossible these sorts of franchises. Yeah. And like that's definitely what John Wick is heading towards. But it could be so much bigger, which yeah. is really fucking crazy. You just have to huh. watch the okay. movies to understand. I what I'm I, I, I got about. the plug on the movies. I just need to. Maybe I'll watch one tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm thinking of trying to get up early and just chill because I don't have anything to do until three. Yeah, yeah, do that. It's one of the first days in a long time. Uh, we also have the Captain America sequels: Civil War, Winter Soldier, both great, great movies. Well, I'm assuming at some point we'll do something where we dive into more Marvel oh, movies. Yeah. We've we've talked about Marvel. We, we got to do a Marvel watch, like. We, yeah, we got to do. Oh, maybe we do that at some point. It's just like Shit. a individual like, movies like from Marvel. Break plans have been oh, made. Fuck yeah! Okay, uh, one of the greatest Christmas break movies to watch: Home Alone Two. God, could that movie be any better? No. It is the most. This is the definition of slapstick, but it's at its best. And like, what's funny is it takes these basic comedy tropes that have been used throughout all exactly. of time. Exactly. This I, and honestly I feel like it really elaborated on it especially considering that this movie was made in the 90s and it, like this form of they they are still remaking fucking home alone movies now they're shitty but they're still trying to replicate that sort of comedy that they had. And they will never do it because um Macaulay Culkin was just I don't know what it was about 13-year-old Crackhead. <laughs> he's a crackhead. No, he's actually a reputable guy now. He owns this, um, like, blog or media company called, like, um, Rabbit Ears or some shit. He's, if you go to his Twitter, there's a there's a photo of oh. him with, like, Rabbit Ears or some shit. And he's, like, good CEO him. of Rabbit Ears or some shit. But, like, nice. He, he's, he's cleaned up. He's cleaned up. That's good. Wasn't um, Donald Trump in Home Alone 2? He yeah, was. He, he made was. A, he made a cam- He stayed cameo. in Trump Hotel. Yeah, that's, he stayed that's in the, where the Trump movie Hotel. Says. Yeah. yeah, well, it wasn't called well, the Trump Hotel yeah. in the movie, but it was the Trump Hotel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it takes these like when I took a theater and theater class back in high school, there you go back to like these like plays from yeah. like the seventeen and eighteen hundreds, uh-huh. and like basic comedy at yeah. that point was mm-hmm. the shit that the kid does to the two dipshits mm-hmm. that try to break into his house like they they're just like haha hit him like, <laughs> he falls <laughs> ah like that's <laughs> that was comedy then. yeah exactly <laughs> like, and it's still hilarious it's still comedy it, no matter who you are if like you see someone who's being a dick mm-hmm. get hit in the face with a swinging paint can yeah you know you're gonna laugh your that's ass that's awesome and the yeah. fact that a 13 year old kid just was like you know what fuck it i'm not letting these robbers take my shit like i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking defend myself and like keep the change you filthy animal <laughs> <laughs> like just think about how fucking like do you know how brilliant you have to be as a kid to like fucking just conjure all of that be like you know what we got shit around the, we don't have any weapons here but we got shit that i can make into weapons that's it, for sure it did help that he saw the home invasion coming oh mm. Had he not, none of this happens. So once he, once he was faced with a, a, a problem, this so I've been doing a lot of research into design thinking and furthermore into what critical thinking actually is. The and Wood- even more research into Home Alone. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know, William Jewell really professes this idea that we are we are the critical thinking college. Yeah. And you know, it's really a joke because everyone's like, "What the fuck? Like, <laughs> we should be doing critical thinking regardless." Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, every college you critically don't, thinks. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how the process of education works. <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, like his ability to be faced with the problem and be like, all right, here are the possible solutions and just be like, all right, so now we're going to like, uh, we, we've thought of the solutions. Now we're going to prototype them. Now we're going to actually employ them and see how they work. And the shit worked perfect. And like, that's just like the kind of mind Macaulay Culkin had. And even his on-the-fly thinking was crazy impressive. Exactly. Like when a like when one of the uh, hotel managers came up to his room, uh-huh. and he was like uh, in the shower, yeah, and like that in the shower. Yeah. That was planned. But I'm talking about when he presses play on the oh, movie, yeah. and it's like, get, like get out of oh, here. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You got ten seconds <laughs> before I fill you with lead. One, two, Yo, ten. That was like the funniest part of Home Alone. Honestly, I just thought that was so funny because I like, always wanted to watch that movie. I know, me too. It doesn't exist. Yeah, they I found were that out. made for that movie. I found that out. I did not know that. I Yo, think that's really dope that they whoever, were just like, "Fuck it, throw whoever that in there." Whoever was behind the original two Home Alone movies, like they they did some shit. They did some shit correctly. Correct. We also got a, another Marvel movie, 
Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Which Guardians of the Galaxy One was great, and then they just kind of were like, you know what? We're, they leveled we're, up. We're a Marvel movie, so we're gonna do some Marvel shit. God, and it's so beautiful visually. It is. It is. Like every time I watch it, I'm just like blown it's a, away. It's like, especially those... the end yeah. when they have like the funeral uh-huh. where they just like all the uh, I can't remember what they were called, but they all like fly over and all their. Yeah, like the colorful shit they're uh-huh. flying from the planes and stuff. And I really thought like the Guardian. I was like, how are they gonna win? Like, I was like, that's that's also the making of a good movie is exactly. when when something can convince you the protagonist has lost. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Marvel movies do best. Oh yeah, even they when they really fucking well. kill Thanos, you're like, like damn, like they still got beat. Like, yeah, like they Thor lost. can chop off his head all he wants. You lost half the world's population. Like they did. Like they gone. Dead and gone. But then they were like, you know what? Let's travel back in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just fix I'm, I'm all not gonna shit. lie. I wasn't a big fan of that the first time I watched it. I was I was concerned when I went and saw it because I did not know that was gonna be a part Me of the either. movie. Nobody at all. did. That was their biggest secret. Yeah, I did, and I was concerned when they posed the idea. Me too. I was like, oh. So this is the direction we're taking with the biggest Marvel movie that has yeah, ever been exa- made. And it, it seems this is like, a cultural phenomenon. And we're going to go with a basic trope like time travel? Exactly. It seemed like it, it, it just seemed like too easy of a way out. Like It was like you wanted to know how they... I mean, honestly, when you think about it, everybody's dead. There's no way to really get them back. Other the travel. only way was time traveling. <laughs> yeah. But, so you're like, okay. Yeah. And I mean, it was unexpected for sure. Yeah. I think it did... Uh, like. I think it was more useful in setting up kind of what's to come. Yeah, like because now we've got all the like multiverse and yeah, that shit that's like probably that. what they wanted to really introduce with that. Yeah, because they ha- didn't have the multiverse before time travel, did they? Well, they did because uh, Ant Man and Stranger oh. uh, Stranger Things, Doctor Strange. Well, that that and that's what they brought out. Like they had those supplementary movies, and then yeah. they like once it got to the Avengers, they were like, all right, so let's now take let's these really focus and on blow this them up. because. That's what's crazy about, like, Ant-Man. That uh-huh. seems like such a small part of the Marvel yeah. Universe. But it's really integral to everything exactly. they did in Endgame. Exactly. Because, like, they don't understand everything that happened mm-hmm. if not for Ant-Man being trapped in the... I can't remember what it was called. I'm going to call um, it the multiverse. The, uh, no, no, no. He was in the... Uh, he, like, reduced down to the, the... It was, like, the something dimension. like the. Oh, yeah. It was, like, he had just, like, reduced down so small that he went into the... Um, God damn! I can't remember it? it either. But it it's a, a different dimension, and he was he was trapped inside of yeah. it. And he, it had been like five months or something uh-huh. for him instead of five years. Yeah. So he was so he came back. His daughter's grown up. Like, and they were like, "Whoa! How the fuck did that happen?" Exactly. And so they figured out time traveling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Ant Man was the reason. But and that was a really the, the way Ant Man and the Wasp. Ant Man. Good the wasp. sequel. They, they they did a really good job. I feel like with um, like. Like, you didn't even have to really watch Ant-Man and the Wasp to get immediately invested in Paul Rudd's story when it came to Endgame. Oh, yeah. Like, when it came to Endgame, he pops out, and, like, he's just a man from five years ago, technically, who's just like, wait, we've, like, everybody's dead? What the fuck? And then he finds his name amongst exactly. the people who are dead? Like, can you imagine? Can, like, this shit would be wild. Like, wild. Because he fuck. didn't even know this shit happened. Exactly. He just came back. He was like, so half the world's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, guys, I have the fix. And they're all like, He's Ant like, man. time travel. <laughs> They're like, okay, guy. Okay, guy. You're just you're just a dude who can train. And then fucking Tony Stark. Oh god. Moment of silence. Thank you. Tony fucking Stark. Tony though. fucking Stark. Like he's just like he's the dude. Like honestly, I feel like that's Iron the Man true two and three were both great. Is like because like he he's there like time traveling. He's like, no, this is a terrible idea. But like you know inside he's in, he's, he's like he's like you know what I could definitely do this. He's like, <laughs> I mean, it's not a good idea foundationally. But he's like, well, fuck, like half the Earth died and it's my fault. What's awesome too is they did not give a shit about explaining the way he figured out exactly. time travel. He just, they portrayed it as him lucking into it, yeah, which well, is fucking brilliant. I don't even think they did. I think they just kind of played on like what Tony Stark does, which is he he sees a problem, he goes, ah, nah. And then like like maybe like a couple days later, he's like, you know, in my spare time, I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it, I loved that scene in the movie, too, because he was like, uh, re- reconfigure this, move this, and... Uh-huh. Uh, See see what it does, and then like he just sits back for a couple seconds. And he goes, "This will be successful," and he's like, "Holy fucking shit!" <laughs> he, was like, he was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> he I figured like, out I time figured travel. Out time travel, and he just goes sits down next to uh, Pepper, and he's just like, <sighs> "So I cracked it." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "So uh, I'm gonna travel back in time." <laughs> Believe it or not. Believe it or not. What a great, what a <sighs> great movie. 
God, Robert Downey Jr. Just no like, better person to I play feel Tony like Stark. Endgame no. is a really weird movie because I feel like it couldn't fail. Oh, like it was. No matter what happened there, it was going to be viewed. Judging by how Marvel movies have progressed, mm-hmm. like there was no way it wasn't going to be yeah, good. They already had so much, I feel like, emotional investment from us by building the the Marvel universe over the past ten years. That like, with this being the end of an era, like everyone was going to feel some sort of emotional attachment to that movie and be like, if you were truly invested in the characters, like mm-hmm. you, you're gonna watch it and be like, damn, we're never gonna see this again. Like, yo, I watched that movie, I cried for three hours. <laughs> 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 it's sad. I remember. I was, I was devastated. I definitely, I definitely teared up. But I remember watching it around the end, like after Tony died. And I'm like, "Yo, like these Marvel movies are never going to be the same." Yeah, like and ugh. and I never even contemplated that. Like I just assumed like they'd always, they'd keep, always but, be like, around. That's not practical. That's like, not practical at all. You, like, and I, I knew it had to come to an end. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect it so early. I, I but mean, it, it wasn't early. It, it, it was ten, ten years. years. It, it didn't ten. feel like it though. Like it flew by. It did. It did. But, like, it also didn't flew by. It, it, no, it, <laughs> it flew by. It, it feels like 10 years. It's like, damn, I've been alive 10 years. Like, I, this has been a huge part of my oh, life yeah. for a very long time. Every time a Marvel time. movie came out, you were like, well, i got to go see it at some point. Exactly. And, like, it I didn't. It didn't really hit mm-hmm. me until Endgame ended, and I yeah. was like, holy shit. <laughs> I just watched my childhood my, end. Yes, that I just was my wa- first thought. My innocence I was like, is gone. 2008, I was seven years old. Like, Bro, what the fuck? That's crazy. Like, the majority of my life, uh-huh. these movies have been being made. Yeah, exactly. And they've been carrying and on And I've watched it every year. Yeah, and, it, and it's been, been building to this. Like, every from the very first Avengers movie, they were building to this. So you straight up have to label... Avengers Endgame as the greatest sequel movie of all time. It's the ultimate sequel yeah, movie. It, it was is. 10 years and of I can't think 27 of, movies. I, it was 27 movies up to that one. Yeah, I can't think of one story that contains that many movies and explores so many different aspects of one universe and then just brings it all, like synthesizes all of it and it's just like, this is the point. Fuck. It's crazy. It's brilliant. I think we could wrap up there yeah yeah crazy this has been a fun episode yes. this is a good one it was our longest one in a while how long we, is it this is a, it's over an hour and a half at this point Ooh, okay. yeah we have uh, we've gone a little shorter for the last few i like that though i like i think i like i like the condensed hour to an hour well. and a half is probably the sweet spot yeah yeah but uh this has been um episode 19 of the penny bloom podcast yeah. it's a uh, co-row tab joined by new friend kenton yeah shout out to you man you you really progressed that philosophy conversation oh yeah like there were times where that definitely would have died, and you just kept going, and I was like, I was like, thank God, thank God. <laughs> I was like, thank God, because I was not gonna say. Anything. <laughs> but yeah, I, good episode, guys. We did yeah, good here. We did good. We'll have to have Kenton on some more. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, peace, love, and bloom. Shout out to uh, Keanu Reeves. Shout out Keanu Reeves. Or God. Yeah. If you will. Uh. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>